Welcome, this is Professor Emily Seal, and you are in Motlow State Community College's Theater Appreciation course for the summer of 2020. Welcome. You could have taken art or music or theater, and you chose theater, and I appreciate it. Um, I may not be your instructor of record. You may not see Emily Seal on your schedule. You may see David Crutcher. You may see Brendan Taylor or Dr. Phyllis Adams. Um, those other professors um, are going to be grading your papers. They'll be with you in the discussion boards, but you'll hear my voice in the lecture. That's my handsome husband and my beautiful little boy. His name is Elliot, and he is five. So um, what does that MFA after my name mean? A little alphabet soup. Uh, that's a Master of Fine Arts in Theater Performance. So my background is acting. Um, I am hiking there on Suwannee Mountain. I'm from Cowan, which is at the foot of Suwannee Mountain, Franklin County girl. Uh, for those of you who are not uh, familiar with the sort of landscape of Tennessee, um, I've taught at the Smyrna site. I've also taught at the Moore County site. And of course, in the summer of 2020, we're all teaching online and taking classes online, unfortunately. It is a weird time for theater. There's a picture of Times Square, relatively empty. Uh, if you've ever been to Times Square, you know it's usually bustling with uh, lots of tourists and all different kinds of languages, and the marquees are blinking and um, advertising all different kinds of shows. But right now, Broadway is shut down, and New York City is one of the hardest hit by this um, by this virus. So. Um, usually what the state curriculum is for uh, theater appreciation or introduction to theater is that you watch a live production critique um, and then, you know, critique it. So, you know, we would have a field trip and go to the Tennessee Performing Arts Center and watch a musical together and you would write a critique over it. Obviously, uh, the theaters are closed right now. It's not by any stretch of the imagination the first time that theaters have been closed. Um, William Shakespeare wrote some of his best sonnets and plays uh, while the plague was going on and, and everything was shut down and quarantined for that. So I don't mean to make it sound like the first time that this has ever happened or that it's unprecedented. I have a picture of Into the Woods there because Stephen Sondheim um, was in New York City during the AIDS crisis when a huge epidemic took out a lot of the people that he knew and loved. And uh, Into the Woods, if you've never seen it before, is a fabulous play. In the first half, they kind of live happily ever after. If you do the junior version with kids, you know the first half is where it ends. Then the second half opens, and a giant has come down and killed a lot of people. And so it's sort of the second half of the play is about what do we do when all these people are dying and we're thrust into a new reality. And we're sort of wandering through the woods. It's been a musical that's meant a lot to me over the last couple of weeks as I've sort of psychologically dealt with um, very uncertain times. So instead of going to see a live production, you will be watching a Broadway HD production, a, a pre-recorded Broadway performance. And uh, I don't know about you, but I've been going to church uh, digitally. You know, my pastor has been wonderful to record all of the services, and uh, it's just not the same. Let's be real. It's just, it's not the same. Um, it's nice to see something familiar. It's nice uh, that my pastor and, and my other minister are going to such great efforts to record. Uh, I tried to watch a concert uh, that was in support of the World Health Organization the other day and it just there was no audience i watched stephen colbert or i tried to and once again without that live audience it's just a different different experience and not a good one uh, in my opinion <laughs> so i mourn the fact that you're not going to be able to watch a live production and i don't mean to speak that maybe by the time this all fleshes out in the next couple months you'll be able to see a live show it'll probably have to be an improv show though because those theaters are not rehearsing. Um, but anyway, I digress. If I recorded most of these last summer, 
uh, most of these lectures. So you may hear in the lecture me refer to the live production critique, um, and now that's not going to be a live production critique, it's just going to be a production critique now. You may also hear me reference the final exam, which was a cumulative over all of the semester, and it was proctored on ground, which means that you went into the testing center and um, you were proctored. Well, Right now the testing centers are closed, so I am waiving for this summer the final exam. So if you hear me reference the final exam, I apologize. I recorded all of these lectures last summer, and that's why it has outdated references in it. And like many of you, or not many, I don't know how many of you, but I have my child at home and recording these lectures with him in tow is not... Uh, as easy being productive at all. I don't know about you, but my brain just isn't working as well. So I know we just met, but <laughs> I'm sharing a lot of myself with you. Welcome to the class. So um, this welcome video is partially laying out what each module or what kind of expectations for the course is, trying to give you um, all of that. But I do want to take just a moment to say, please make sure that you're prioritizing your study time. Please make sure that um, you look over the syllabus and see the way that I do things. If, for example, you plagiarize in this class, you will fail that paper and likely fail the course. So I want you to be kind of aware of what my expectations are so that you are ready to jump into this semester and fully understanding. I would challenge you to go to that schedule in the introduction module and go ahead and put those dates on your calendar and make sure that you're meeting them. It's so easy in an online class to take a vacation mentally and then come back and be like, oh no, I forgot that big assignment. So uh, in an online class, I'm not there to remind you, I'm not there to hold your hand, especially in a college level course. Unfortunately, I have a lot of high school students who come into college thinking that they're gonna get um, a passing grade just for participating and that's not how college works. Um, please don't plan to just walk into these assignments and guess and pass. I have so many students who are so deeply disappointed at the end of the semester. Um, you know, we expect you to write eloquently. We expect your discussion board thought, reflections to be thoughtful. Please don't just try to um, coast your way through the class uh, because the the semester can go very quickly, especially in the summer, and um, we have very little room for error or makeup uh, in the summer. If you get behind, it's very easy to fall off completely. So before you go buy this Theater of the Lively Art, double check online and make sure that it's not available for free because some of these uh, textbook companies have their resources free right now as a sort of um, goodwill gesture during the pandemic. Uh, the other required book is just a small play text, which is The Piano Lesson by August Wilson. There's also a movie version of it online, but you are going to want a hard copy because you have to cite act and scene numbers. It's not an expensive book. I think mine was $10 used. So make sure. And, and as far as the piano lesson, it can be any edition. Um, as far as the 10th edition of The Lively Art. Uh, if you can find it cheaper in an older edition, uh, that's fine by me. Of course, the, the chapters may be rearranged or something like that. You'll have to work out for yourself. Uh, but I understand the frustration with expensive textbooks. And um, you know, this is an online environment. So if you can work it out for yourself, uh, then that is no skin off my back. So just a little warning about me, if you are in my section of theater, one of my pet peeves is when people come to me and they say, I'm not creative, or I'm not an artist, or I can't draw. Um, it makes me sad for a couple reasons. Uh, part of what we say when you get out of college is that you're a creative problem solver. College, a liberal arts education especially, is just an opportunity for us to make sure that you can solve problems creatively and that whatever comes your way, you can think critically enough to get at the root of the problem and fix it, right? Um, and part of that is creativity, and creativity is just like lifting weights. Now, there are some people who are born with natural talents. There are some people who are born with original minds. Um, but that doesn't mean that just because you weren't born with it that you can't work at it. 
So, and I, you know, I have students come to me and tell me a story of their art teacher who shamed them publicly in front of everybody or a dance teacher who mocked them. And I, I hate to hear those stories. I'm not here um, to to ridicule you. I know that creativity and art takes a certain amount of vulnerability when you write your own story or when you uh, draw your own picture. You're, you're sharing yourself with me, and I appreciate that, and I'm not here to criticize you. Um, but I do want to see you try to be creative because in these times of the pandemic especially, we need problem solvers. We need people who can think creatively. So I am going to continue to challenge you that way. So um, what are you in for? <laughs> uh, so like I said, we used to have a final exam, but we don't. Um, so we just have 11 quizzes and some of those cover one chapter, some of them cover two chapters per module or quiz. Um, and for each quiz, I'll have a terms and concepts to know. That's a, a place where you can go and get those terms. And then as you're listening to the lecture, you can write down you know what the definitions of those terms are what are the concepts as they relate to what i'm testing you over so that's my little sort of tip or trick to prepare for the quiz look at those terms to know it's going to be a huge nod because of course we don't cover everything that's in the textbook we, this is by no means an expansive survey of all of the theater that ever existed because that is um, too much to count too much to know so during each one of those modules, each time you have to take a quiz, I'll also ask you to reflect on the content in a discussion board environment. And that's going to be assessed through your um, through your uh, participation grade. And I leave those discuss discussion questions open all semester long. I don't have an end date for those um, because I do want to encourage you to keep talking and keep um discussing with each other. Uh, there's a lot of proof that that sort of helps with retention. I would ask you to put up a profile picture if you haven't already into your D2L shell just so I can keep you guys straight and start to feel like I know you. I know it can be tempting to put a cute one of your cat, but if you could, you know, find your best picture. I don't care if it's from 15 years ago. Lord knows mine is. Um, I just want you to, I want to be able to associate it with your face. I, one of my favorite things is when I'm advising I'll have a student come in and say, oh, I had you for your online class. And I can finally put a face with the digital picture, but I want to get to know you. I want to feel like I know you as a student, which is an obstacle in these online classes, let's be honest. So then you're going to write a character analysis of the piano lesson. So you'll pick one character and sort of do a deep dive reflection. And there's a whole module labeled piano lesson in which you can, uh, the lecture clearly outlines what the assignment entails. But you're sort of an armchair psychologist. You try to get into their head of this character and explain why you think they made the decisions that they made. And then, of course, your second pa paper is that production critique. And that is a cumulative side. Uh, assignment over what you've studied all semester long. Now I'm going to leave some choice there. There are um, around 15 different performances that are available through Broadway HD right now. Um, a lot of you will probably pick Romeo and Juliet just because you're familiar with it. It's Shakespeare. It's something you know and that's fine. Um, if you're a big fan of musical theater, I recommend She Loves Me with Zachary Levi. I think it's um, heartwarming and romantic and um, I really like Sereno de Bergiac as well. I, I'm a huge Kevin Klein fan and he's very romantic in that. I don't think Jennifer Garner's good but I'll let you decide. I'm not thinking she's a bad actor in most cases I just don't really like her depiction in that role. Um, anyway that's another classic Sereno de Bergiac is also dated language like Romeo and Juliet. If you're looking for something happy you know, just sort of forgetting about the plague, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, Old Hats by starring Bill Irwin is a really fun, different, creative. Uh, you may know Bill Irwin as Mr. Wiggles on Sesame Street. He's a lot of fun. If you have a dark and kind of twisted sensibility or you want to indulge that in our time of plague, I do recommend Buried Child. It is uh, deep and meaningful and painful, um, but... A country, which I think is, you know, for a lot of us, watching something that depicts um, rural life can be um, affirming or 
but uh, Buried Child is creepy, uh, as you, if you can't tell by the title of the play. Uh, Buried Child is creepy, but it's a beautiful piece of American poetry. And I think um, if you don't like musicals, if you don't like camp, Buried Child might be a good route for you. Disclaimer, I am recording this in April. Broadway HD sometimes cycles out what's available, just like Netflix. It can go off or on, so... Um, just be warned there. You may be looking for Sarah Nodavrziak and it may not be there. But, um, And I just want to remind you that you'll be writing your critique over the performance as it is in Broadway HD. So you may be familiar with Romeo and Juliet, the film version um, with Leonardo DiCaprio, but we're not critiquing a film. We're going to try to critique a recorded Broadway performance, right? Once again, totally bummed out about this. It's not the same, right? Watching a video of church is not the same as being at church. Watching a video of Broadway is not the same as being in the theater and smelling the sights and watching the huge spectacle of it. It's just lame. I'll be honest with you. I think it's lame. And uh, by all means, if the theaters reopen and you can watch a live theater production and write a live theater production critique, I'll be happy to revise that assignment. But for now, we just going to make do, right? Con country people, we're hunkered down. We're going to make do. I don't mean to say that. I know some of you are living in Murfreesboro and Antioch and other places that are not rural. But um, OK, so costume rendering. This is a creative assignment. Um, it is uh, where you take The Wizard of Oz and reset it in a different time. There are instructions for that uh, in the module that relates to it. But just to be. On, if you look in assessments and assignments, you'll see those two papers and then that costume rendering assignment, um, which is a fun sort of add-on. And I hope that you will enjoy that creative challenge because, like I said, I want you to be a thinker and problem solver. In my online class, I'm not able to sort of um, have as many opportunities for creativity, I think, as I do in my on-ground class. Um, I really enjoy this being much more of a hands-on um, assignments and, and hands-on creative problem solving um, playful environment but I'm working with what we can in the online environment jazz hands I love musical theater I save musical theater for the very end uh, because I do know that some not everybody shares my affinity for musical theater so um, I, not that I don't talk about musical theater along the way but the final uh, module is about Broadway and musical theater, and I kind of try to save it for that. So where should I start? Start with those terms to know. Then go through and read the chapters in the textbook as it relates to the, um, the terms. And I will sometimes assess you over a term that's not in the lecture, but is in that terms to know it's in the textbook. Part of that is just making sure you're reading. Reading really is the key to success in college. And that's not always helpful. It's kind of like saying, you know, the way to lose weight is to eat your vegetables. A lot of people don't want to hear that, that if you read, you'll do well in college. But it's really one of the, to me, the clear truths. So then, like I said, you'll watch the videos and the lectures. I've tried to include clips from plays, clips from, it's a very visual art form, theater is. And so I think that those clips uh, can help elucidate what we're talking about. And some chapters are more clip heavy than others. So the genre chapter, I try to give you clips from every genre. In the Asian theater chapter, I try to give you clips of every type of Asian theater that you may not be familiar with otherwise. Um, so sometimes you'll have no clips to watch, other times you might have 10 clips to watch, and they're not long. It's just a way of me, um, it's a way f for me to introduce you to the text. Um, probably the longest clip chapter is the history, because there's this great PBS resource um, with uh, little videos describing different times in theater history that I think are really useful. So the theater history. And by that time, it's towards the end of the semester, I get the feeling that you're, you guys are sick of my voice by then. So uh, that's another reason why I kind of create that theater history to be more based on outside resource. So then, like I said, after you've read the couple chapters or the chapter that is going to be assessed, there's a discussion board for a time for reflection for you guys to talk amongst yourselves, right? And um, 
I do think that that's a valuable time for you to bond with each other and teach each other. Sometimes you guys can explain it to each other in a way that I, as um, someone who understands the content more deeply, I can't necessarily summarize it the way sometimes you guys can summarize it to each other. So uh, I appreciate that when you guys can teach each other and reflect on it in a meaningful way, apply it in a real world circumstance. Theater is a very hands-on, real world skilled base environment. So I really appreciate when you guys can process that information and then reflect on it in the discussion in a real world way. So like I said, there's the two papers and then there's that um, rendering activity. Uh, so always be looking in the discussion and on the schedule to make sure that those don't sneak up on you in an online environments. Much easier for those papers and other things. The papers are basically due at midterm and, and finals. So uh, hopefully that helps you. I would once again, I'd start with those terms in the checklist and then I would go back to it at the end before I take the assessment. I would look at those terms in that checklist and then take the quiz. So um, that's my advice on such things. So I, I do teach theater, but I also teach communication. And there is this thing that happens. A lot of us have probably run into an internet troll in our lives, but even for the kindest of souls, uh, being in an online environment has a disconnect. Physiologically, we're not meant to communicate this way. It's a lot easier for us to do in communication theory what's called firing in an online environment for you to be rude to me in an email, for you to be rude to someone else in a discussion, for you to misunderstand what somebody's saying. So I just want to challenge you that this is an academic environment. I want you to model professionalism in the way that you speak and type. So please um, read Double check your email to make sure that the tone is appropriate. Double check your discussion posts to make sure that it couldn't be misunderstood in as far as it depends on you. Because it is very easy in this stilted form of communication for uh, us to misunderstand each other. So um, please know that if I message you and say, hey, your grammar in the discussion post is not academically sound. Can you please rewrite it to model good academic writing for the class? Um, please don't take that personally. I know it can be weird to sort of shift between Facebook and Instagram or Twitter and then go into your online class with the same sort of um, jargon or casualness, but I am going to ask you to model academic writing um, because for some people it's not a struggle, but for others it is. And so we want to make sure just to keep our standards high. Um, and I will say that it's kind of hard with piano lesson because the people do speak in slang, but then you're writing in a way that's not slang. So I apologize for that code switching to communication theory wise. Um, I've worked very hard on this class. I built it from the ground up. I've been teaching it for a while now. I'm very proud of it. Um, but that said, if there are broken links, if there are problems, please contact your instructor and have them contact me uh, as soon as possible so that we can fix it and make it right. This is not some big impersonal textbook company class. This is something that I've put together carefully and I'm very proud of it, but I, we want to keep the quality up. And so keep the lines of communication open, talk to us, um, know that we're here for you in whatever way that we can serve you. We want to do that. We want to teach you about theater. If you go away from this class having even a little tiny portion of the passion for theater that I have, I will have done my job. So, and even if you go away from this class hating theater, if you can think critically or see things from a different perspective, I will have done my job. So, um, I challenge you to go away now, read that syllabus, make sure you understand the deadlines and the, that are coming in the class, and um, hopefully stick with us, and we'll do it together. Thank you for listening.